So today's topic, we're going to talk about Google penalty. And this is what we would do if we got hit. In fact, Google just talked about a Google algorithm update called the helpful content update that's coming out. So we think it's pretty timely to talk about this. So Syed, what would you do if you got hit with a Google penalty? I've gotten hit by Google penalties many times in the past because I was not following the guidelines. And Google is very good, right? They have this Google Search Central blog where they have tons of amazing content to tell you what to do, what not to do. If you try to do any of the shady things like buying backlinks or creating AI-generated content, all those things are going to get you penalized. So there's two types of penalties when I look into Google SEO penalties. And based on the type of penalty you got, then the actions that you have to take are slightly different. One is the manual action penalty. That means a reviewer from Google's team saw your website, believed that it was not following the guidelines. Maybe you were building spam links. Maybe you were creating spam content. Maybe you were stealing content. Your content just wasn't good enough. Your website wasn't good enough, and you will get a manual action penalty. And that will be visible to you inside the Google Webmaster Tools, also known as Google Search Console. You go in there, it will say manual action penalty, and it will tell you the reason why you got that penalty. There's a time when I bought a website and the reason why somebody sold it to me is because it had a manual action penalty. And the reason for that was because they had built tons of footer links. They were a theme company and they just built tons of footer links and it was not abiding by the Google guidelines. So basically, I, I cleaned up all those links. I reached out to all those sites and had them remove those links. I had my team disavow all the links that we didn't want. Like we said, okay, these we couldn't get removed. We made a reasonable effort and it took months and months. I think it's maybe four or five months for us to do the cleanup on that website. Another thing that guy was doing, he was selling links on his site. So we searched all the links that were being sold on those sites and manually remove those links from our content. We deleted a bunch of content that was not helpful. And ultimately, five months, four or five months later, we applied. First time we applied to re-review and they said, no, you didn't put reasonable effort. And then we went back and cleaned up more stuff. And then we reapplied. And then Google said, you're good. You're in the clear. So now, back in the day, I didn't have those tools. Now I would just be able to use my own tool in All-in-One SEO, Link Assistant. One of the big reasons why I had my team build Link Assistant in All-in-One SEO was not just because it helps me with internal linking easier, but when we acquire a new website and let's say it has an SEO penalty, I can just see all the domains it's linking out to and maybe some of them are bad neighborhood. I know that these were the links sold. I can just one click remove all those links. So when you have a manual action penalty, that's the way you want to go about it. Now, the new update that you're talking about, Christina, that would be an algorithmic penalty. Okay, because it's an algorithm update. Google is coming out with a new one right now called the helpful content. Google comes out with about three or four, maybe updates, sometimes two, two to four updates a year that are big ones, right? And this is going to be a big one. And what they're really focusing on in this one is making sure that people are creating well, creators are creating people first content, right? There's just way too much AI driven content, right? GPT-3, amazing technology. And now some marketer has made up these article spinners that are slightly better than the old school article spinners, but Google already knows when it's an AI content. So if you're creating search engines first content with AI and bots and these really thin content, super short, not helpful, not demonstrating subject matter expertise, you're going to get dinged on it. And you know what you're doing. If you get penalized on it, you know what you did. Okay. So stop doing that and then take off all that content, write good content and you'll do okay. Now, other times though, you might get hit, even though when you were not doing any of that, maybe your content just sounded too much like the bot was. Maybe your website was not a topical authority on a topic. So for example, I run a website, WP Beginner, and we talk all about WordPress. How would it be if all of a sudden I started giving travel tips on how to maximize your credit card points? That is, I'm not a topical authority on that. And all of a sudden I start talking about how to use rebates to make, save more money on buying your first TV or your laptop. Again, that's not my topical authority. It puts me away from the eat, right? Expertise, authority, and trust. People don't believe that I'm an expert in that. I am not an authority in that. They don't trust me on that. So if I have those kind of content that's so off of the unrelated to my main blog, I will. Uh, I would want to remove that content. So if you are hit with that, if you don't perform really well on this Google update that's coming out, we don't know who, who are going to be the winners, who are going to be losers. But if you don't perform on that, then uh, that will be some of the things. The worst part about algorithmic penalties is that there's no way you can appeal on these. 
and you also don't really know exactly what hurt you, right? So you basically read, I would read a site like SE Roundtables and see what tips people are saying. I would go on Twitter search and just see what other SEOs are saying. And I'll make my own assumptions and make my own plan and try to update here and there and wait for the next three to four months when the Google updates next. And ultimately the goal is to serve our users. As long as we continue to do that, as long as you continue to do that, putting people first, then usually Google corrects. And I've seen the Google algorithm make a mistake and they do make mistakes. So I think like a couple of years ago, they pushed out an update that hurt our rankings. And I genuinely was like, well, I think they made a mistake because there's no reason why WP Beginner content should not rank number one for anything related to WordPress. We're practically Wikipedia for WordPress and we have the best content in the industry bar none for beginners, step by step, no steps skipped. Everybody else is just copying our content. So we know that our content was top notch and we just kept doing what we were doing. Four months later, Google corrected their mistake and our rankings went back up. So sometimes the key is to not freak out. Remain unusually calm when this is happening. If you're down 20%, 30% in your traffic, don't freak out. If you believe your strategy is the right thing to do for the user, then you just go ahead and do that. And that's what's important. But on an algorithmic penalty, you just don't know. Yeah, you, there's nothing you can do immediately to get the results. Sometimes Google may say they've ended the update and then two weeks later, you don't know, behind the scenes, they're still tweaking it. So you may lose traffic and two weeks later, it comes back. Sometimes it takes three to four months to come back. And I've been around the block doing this for 16 years now and I've seen it all. And this is generally the way I would go about doing dealing with an algorithmic penalty or any Google penalty. Okay, that's it for today. If you have a topic that you want us to cover, let us know in the comments below. And if you found value in this episode, please leave us a review. And as always, thanks for watching and listening.